Okay, so we're going to finish up our notes for waves today. Uh, we might have one more thing in notes dealing with light so that we can do a little bit more discussion. I don't anticipate a test coming in the next few days at all or probably next week. It will probably be the next week. Uh, I do. I will have a project starting for you guys next week. I'll have everything posted for you. Uh, no worries there. Make sure you tune in to all the live streams if you have any questions. Uh, we'll try to do something fun with the one next Wednesday or Friday. Uh, most of the time, the live streams are just going to be question and answer stuff because you'll get all of your lectures from these and from your flip lessons. So if you have any questions, then we can go over in the live stream. Okay, so standing waves. Standing waves are different than the waves you're used to seeing. So standing waves are more of a reflection upon itself. So we can tell the standing waves, waves are based on nodes and antinodes. So this is the viewpoint of a standing wave. So nodes are the stationary part. They are the part that you see here. So your middle of the wave, basically wherever it reaches the the middle point. Antinodes are the positions in which the standing waves has the largest amplitude. So your amplitude, of course, is the top parts or the parts that you have between the top and bottom. You will They will be the farthest away from each other. So that's what our antinodes are. So with harmonics, so you've heard of harmonics like with music and things like that. Well, we can determine what harmonics are based on antinodes. So you look at your first, second, third, fourth a harmonics, sorry, your antinodes are going to be what determines which harmonic they are. So if you have one, two, three, or four, that determines on what you're looking at. So the Doppler effect. So this is one way that we track our storms. And this is another way we track like submarines or marine animals or we track airplanes with the Doppler effect. So this is the apparent change of frequency due to motion of the source. So that so when you watch a movie that's looking for submarines and you hear that beep as they're going across, they're hearing the waves from that object. And that's how you get sonar. That's how you get Doppler uh, for your weather that's how you find an object out in the middle of the ocean if you're looking for it that's how buoys work that's why we have buoys buoys basically give off that doppler effect to be able to see where that thing is also this is how we can determine how fast an object is moving so that applies to sound and light so this is our, how our Doppler effect works. So you, we gradually hear it, and it will get closer. The closer it gets, the, the shorter the w waves are away from each other. The farther it gets away from its original point, the farther the, the waves get away. Uh, the, there's a funny video of Sheldon Cooper on Big Bang discussing what the Doppler effect is. You'll have to look it up if you want to. It's pretty funny. All right, bow waves. Bow waves are when an a object moves faster than the speed of the wave surrounding it. So this is a two-dimensional wave. So if something is moving two-dimensionally extremely fast compared to what its waves are, it'll create a bow wave. So that's what these things are saying. So if the A is less than what its bow wave is, and then D is when it gets faster than its waves, the waves surrounding it. So shock waves are similar. So they are three-dimensional. So this happens when you break the sound barrier. And I actually have a video of the Concorde, which is one of the faster-than-sound planes out there. So we'll watch that real quick. It's pretty cool. And this is the Concorde taking off. And you can see with the Doppler effect, you can see how the closer it gets to you, 
the shorter the sound waves are as they they are getting closer to you. So as the faster it moves, the shorter the sound waves are. And then you see how it gets further away. It gets a little quieter and quieter because it is leaving its sound waves behind. And that's how we view the Doppler effect. And that is a sonic boom. So it broke the sound barrier right there. Let me watch that one more time. So. so you can hear that even though you're seeing it move fast. It's pretty awesome. All right, so going past shock waves. And they are always cone shaped. That's why we have a sonic boom. Uh, so an object that sees the wave of the uh, speed of sound creates a shock wave, which creates a sonic boom, which we can hear. Uh, the object does not have to initially make any sound in order to produce the sonic boom. So if it is an object that is moving faster than sound, so it could be like a gunshot, the bullet itself, if it moves fast enough, can create a sonic boom. For instance, a whip. So the sound of a whip cracking is actually a sonic boom. And that is a sonic boom. So you can hear you can hear the sonic boom itself even though it doesn't it doesn't really create a sound before it does that. guy's pretty talented. It takes a little bit of work to be able to do that. All right. So moving on. And remember, these are kind of shorter notes, too. Uh, I think we only have, yeah, four more slides. Not too bad. Okay. So force vibrations. So these are the sounds that can come from a string of plucks. So a guitar would be an audible sound. If it would be inaudible if you don't have the open wooden body. So if you have to use an amplifier on like an electric guitar to be able to hear those vibrations, it's pretty cool. So sounds are more intense if additional material is made to vibrate. So the body of the guitar actually helps it vibrate. So if you think of a drum, if you just hit a drum, a regular drum, you're not going to get as much of a sound or an amplified sound as you do from a snare drum. So a snare drum has a tightened uh, metal, I guess you could call it chain around the bottom of it, creating that louder and more uh, violent sound than what a tom drum has. So, natural frequency. Frequency w at which the smallest amount of energy is required to force vibrations. So an, an object of, uh, made of elastic material will vibrate at its own frequency when disturbed. So this means that the object has some sort of point. So the natural frequency is the point at which an object will vibrate and create a frequency. So that depends. That could be a car engine. That can be a guitar string. That can be the elastic in your sweatpants, uh, anything like that. So natural frequency depends on the elasticity and shape of that object. So everything has a natural frequency. It just depends on what force is needed to create that vibration.
So this is when the frequency of a force vibration matches the object's natural frequency. So dramatically increases the amplitude of the wave. This is so like pumping a swing or so like when you kick your feet and it creates the swing to go. Or if you have an, an increased amplitude of a guitar string or, or something like that. So when you're trying to create that ampl amplified sound. Uh, so this is it for today. I will post the other worksheet and you'll probably have another lecture later this week. Um, this is, we'll have a lecture on light. Uh, I don't know if we'll do that this week or the next week, but if so, we'll figure it out. All right. I hope you guys have a good day. Finish up your work in your other classes. Talk to you later.